Okay, hey everybody, Teching101 here, and um, this video is basically me fixing something that I should have fixed like a year ago. You know, I'm just getting around to it now. Uh, I've made a lot of videos over the years, and after I make a video, especially a really long video, like a video that's like an entire day kind of project, you know, I film for like over an hour and the editing takes forever, and after I'm done with all of that and I find out I made a mistake or I left something out, you know, that really like, ah, damn it, that's... All that time, and I still left something out, you know, and it, it happens a lot, but, um, you know, sometimes more than others, and a video that I made about a year ago, which is insane, it happened a year ago, I made a video chronicling all the different Marines in One Piece, like all the different ranks and the Marines that hold those ranks, and um, it was a great video, except I was sick when I filmed it, and by the time I got to the end, where I discussed the Vice Admirals, I was kind of like done, and I was like, okay, let's just breeze through all the Vice Admirals, so for that reason, I forgot to discuss, I, I, I didn't even mention him in that video, an extremely important Vice Admiral in the Marines. I am, of course, referring to Vice Admiral Dalmatian. God damn it, man! How can I- I know! I know! I should just, you know, seppuku right now. I mean, there's no point in even going on anymore. Freaking Dalmatian. Okay, so, uh, there's this guy who's a Vice Admiral. He has a zone fruit that allows him to turn into a Dalmatian, so I would assume it's the dog dog fruit model Dalmatian. Um, that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed, I just really wanted to correct that. Okay, no, no, no. Today's video is gonna be all about the Vice Admirals, because I feel like the Vice Admirals, the vast majority of them, are kind of overlooked. Now, when I say the vast majority, obviously I'm not including Garp. Everyone knows how badass Garp is, he's one of the strongest characters in all of One Piece, right? Um, and he's actually not even technically a Vice Admiral right now, I think his official title is like an instructor or something. Like, he was gonna resign, but they basically convinced him to stay on because that that is good for morale and stuff like you know new recruits coming to join the Marines like come and join the Marines and get trained by the fist himself you know so he's there and he you know helps train new recruits and whatever okay but uh, we're not talking about Garp obviously Garp is awesome uh, but I'm just talking about like a lot of the other vice admirals that get kind of overlooked mostly because uh, of the admirals you know, you have the Admiral class, which is right above the Vice Admirals, and you have, you know, uh, Akainu, who's the Fleet Admiral, the guy that killed Ace, and he's got the magma powers, and he's really badass. Then you have Kizuru, who has light speed. Then you have Fujitora, who has blinding speed. And then you have uh, Green Bull, who we know nothing about, absolutely no idea what the deal is with Green Bull or what their abilities might be. Um, and we always sit down and make up theories about, like, how the final battle with the Admirals are going to go. Who's going to fight Kizuru in the, at the final hour of One Piece? Who's going to, you know, is it going to be like a straight up brawl between Luffy and Akainu? Is it going to be Sabo and Akainu? Because that would be just so poetic. Um, Garp even claimed he wanted to take a shot at uh, Akainu at some point. So how's that going to go? Um, but you have to remember the Vice Admiral class, that's nothing to sneeze at either. In fact, the Vice Admirals right now could definitely contend with the Straw Hats. Okay, like, if you're sitting there and you think that, like, Zoro could fight against Momonga and it would just be an easy fight for Zoro, like, Zoro could just kick the shit out of Momonga and be on with his day, you're kind of delusional, alright? Actually, I'll go straight up. You are delusional. Now, not all Vice Admirals are created equal, and there's some that Oda has, you know, given a little bit more of a, of a badass reputation than others, you know? Like, for example, uh, what's that guy? Camille, I think his name was, that appeared in Ace's little ba uh, cover story there when he was searching for Blackbeard, the coffee dude. Yeah, okay. I, I, I don't know. Maybe Camille's a badass. I don't know. But for the most part, we don't really know much about Camille. But when we're talking about Vice Admirals that are badass, I'm talking about... Momonga for one, I'm talking about Stainless, because that mustache alone is epic. Uh, most of the giant squad are all uh, Vice Admirals, although I think we only know of two of them that are confirmed, like, uh, actually stated to be Vice Admirals. Uh, Ronce and uh, La LaCroix, I think his name is, which is a type of, like, carbonated water, but okay, whatever. Um, yeah, those two are confirmed to be Vice Admirals, but uh, I'm pretty sure, like, either, you know, most of the uh, giant squad are, like, either higher level Marines or Vice Admirals there. And on top of that, we also have Onigu who looks pretty badass. He kind of has like a, a spider kind of devil fruit. We have Suru, of course, who is this older lady. Now, Suru is referred to as the great tactician. All right. And you look at her and you think, oh, she's just a frail old lady. But you got to figure that her devil fruit is powerful enough to just kind of like wave away a bunch of pirates.
pirate riffraff. Like, it's nothing. Like, she didn't even really pay attention to them. People are charging at her with swords, and she just didn't even really do anything. She just kind of like, eh. And then she captured them in her Devil Fruit ability. Uh, Doflamingo still respects her quite a bit. So, you know, I wouldn't think of Suru as just like a brittle old woman that's just sitting around knitting all day and baking chocolate chip cookies, okay? She could probably kick your ass. Um, not, not as much as like other of the Vice Admirals, but she's still... She, don't just write her off, okay? Don't write off Suru, okay? Plus, she had it kind of going on in her younger years. Damn straight. Okay, who else? Well, we also have uh, John Giant, who was the first giant character to be introduced in the story, I believe, way back in the East Blue. Uh, John Giant was also recently mentioned because I believe it was Mother Caramel that actually sold John Giant to the Marines, and that kind of fostered the uh, beginnings of the relationship, I think, actually, between the Giants, Elbath, and the Marines, because there's an entire giant squad in the Marines, and I think that all stemmed from John Giant being sold to them at a young age, and then, like, you know, some of the giants were thinking, oh, okay, yeah, we could, we could join up with the Marines. You know, they're, you know, John, our buddy John's hanging out with them, and everything seems to be going good there. So John Giants, they're pretty awesome. Uh, we also have Smoker. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I really don't know where Smoker's, where this whole thing with his arc is going to go. Maybe comment on that below, because I could see it going both ways. I could see Smoker standing by the Marines... You know, maybe begrudgingly because he still feels like wh while there's like cracks being formed in his image of the Marines over the years, you know, he starts off thinking that it's like the force for good fighting the pirates. And then you notice with every major arc that Smoker's in, like he slowly begins to see the chinks in that armor. He slowly begins to see that the Marines are not like effectively the good guys all the time. And sometimes the pirates are in the right and the Marines are in the wrong. So... I could see Smoker either trying to stay with the Marines to try to reform them and try to maybe become, like, I could even see, like, at the very, very end of One Piece, like, if we're going to have, like, a time skip to the future, like, a 10-year time skip or something, I could see Smoker being an admiral, maybe even the fleet admiral or something, trying to stay with the Marines and trying to reform them a little bit. Um, or I could see him standing against them by the end of it. I could see him deciding, you know what, this is ridiculous. I, I, I can't stand on your side anymore, and then he just leaves. He defects, and he fights against them eventually. I, I could see this going a bunch of different ways with Smoker. His character arc is definitely kind of a little different than the other Marines uh, introduced in the story. Um, so he's sort of an exception here, but uh, he's still pretty badass. He's a Vice Admiral. He's pretty cool. Who else do we got? We got Doberman, who's another Vice Admiral that's named after a dog. Um, he was one of the guys, I think, that attacked uh, you know uh, Annie's Lobby as part of the Buster Call. Really badass-looking dude, stoic expression face like a rock and he's gotten freaking scars all over his body so yeah that's the kind of guy you don't want to piss off I think that's like all of the ones that are really like noteworthy um, of course there's other ones like uh, I think Manzambaya is one of them Yamakaji is another one that I think attacked during the buster call uh, so yeah there's there's other marines like that and we might get to see maybe, maybe moments like that but I think for the most part um, they're just kind of like, like filler vice admirals like just to kind of fill out the class to make it look like, okay, well, we have to have, like, a certain number of these, like, a quota. Um, you know, I don't think, like, Yamakaji is gonna have, like, a big epic fight in the story or something like that. But I definitely could see that from Momonga. I think enough of him has been established at this point. I mean, his first, like, shining moment was when he showed up. I think, wasn't he a member of the Buster Call? I think he might have been, like, an early introduction at the Buster Call, if I'm not mistaken. But of course, his first major appearance that really, like, you know, sent goosebumps down our collective spines and really got us to, like, be, you know, impressed by this dude was his confrontation with uh, Boa Hancock when uh, he sailed into the comm belt to meet with them because of the treaty they had with Amazon Lily. He had to, like, dock his, like, like anchor his ship a few miles off the coast of the island. Giant Sea King pops out of the water. I think he sh it straight up swallows him, and then he just slices his way out of it. And he just, like, sits on the top of the damn thing you know, with a big hunk of freaking meat and just... <laughs> Mm. Been waiting for a while, Hancock. You know, so come on! Momonga is freaking cool! I'm gonna throw Momonga up in the thumbnail. Screw it. He's the true star of this show. Look at his damn freaking mustache. Look at his top knot. Fights with a sword. Uh, there's Strawberry, the guy with the hair. Um, I kind of forgot about him. And, and you know, you kind of have to look into how Oda designs his characters, too. You know, like, he gives such a unique design to, like, Momonga and Doberman and Strawberry. Strawberry has the very unique, like, long beard and the super, super tall hair. And, and, and you think for a second, like, okay... 
All right, th there's a reason why you drew him like that. There, You might be incorporating him into something big in the future. I don't think we really know anything about Strawberry in terms of his Devil Fruit, and that's something else to bring up. A lot of the Vice Admirals do not actually make use of Devil Fruit abilities, or do not have them, or at least we don't know. Um, the only ones I think that use Devil Fruit abilities are like Smoker, obviously. We have Onigumo with his Spider Fruit. We have Dalmatian with his Zone Dog Fruit. We have Suru with the Washu Washu no Me. Um... I think that actually might be it. I think it might just be four. Um, yeah, because the Giants don't have Devil Fruits. Uh, John Giant doesn't. Uh, Doberman, Yamakaji, Momonga, uh, Maynard, uh, Catman, you know, from the from the Coliseum. You know, he doesn't have one. Bastille does not. Um, Bastille also, I mean, I thought Bastille was going to be cool. I thought Bastille was going to be a badass. And... Um, really didn't really turn out to be that. He was at Dressrosa. He was the one that had the mask on, right? And, uh, Sabo just kind of, like, crushed him and destroyed his mask, and he didn't really have anything unique there. Um, I think it was originally, uh, revealed that he was a giant. He was, like, the shortest giant in the series. But then later on, it was revealed that, like, um, real giants are, like, even taller than he was. Or, like, even the real shortest giants are taller than he was. So he might be, like, a, a half-breed kind of, like, character. Like, a lot of, like, a, like big mom's children. Like, he might be half-giant, right? So, uh, that's the thing. But Bastille kind of... He was awesome at first because he had the mask and the long hair and he fought with this giant, like, saw blade. But then he got his shit beat up by Sabo relatively easy. And it's just like, I, I know it's Sabo. He's strong. But it is like, all right, all right. He didn't really go much from there. But, um, yeah, I think there's only the four that actually have Devil Fruit abilities and they incorporate into combat, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the Giants squad now, because I've been re-watching some of the scenes from Marineford, and the Giants are not too impressive in that arc. They get their asses kicked quite a bit, so at first you would look at that and you would say, oh, well, I guess the Giants, they're just all brawn and no bite. You know, they just, they're just really tough and strong to a normal person, but, you know, they're, when, when the heat's on, they just have to get out of the kitchen. You have to understand that it was mostly Whitebeard that was on, like, giant busting duty there, okay? And when you fight against Whitebeard, I mean, come on, you're kind of signing your own death warrant there. So the first giant to get his ass kicked was Ronsei. This is what this idiot decided, okay? So Ors gets taken down. It, right in front of Whitebeard's eyes, and Whitebeard is watching his, his this this loyal, um, not a member of his crew, but uh, like an ally of him, and somebody that, you know, he kind of views as a child in a sense. Because Whitebeard didn't just view his own crew as his children, he also viewed, like, he called Squardo his son as well. So he probably viewed Ors Jr. the same way. Ors gets dropped, Whitebeard's sitting there, like, just, <sighs> Ors, no... And then Ronsei decides, Whitebeard, you put your guard down. And he kind of tries to attack him with this giant axe. Whitebeard, without even looking, just quake bubbles, stops the axe, and just, oh, holy God, no. And then just slams him down and just breaks the mask and just tosses him aside like freaking, like, Monday night's garbage, you know, like there's nothing that even like hinted there that like Ronse was even gonna even damage Whitebeard, okay? So you can't even look at that and say, oh, Ronse sucks because he couldn't take down a Yonko while he was in the middle of a massive rage moment because his child got effectively killed right in front of him. Like, okay, yeah, 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 so that's not cool. You can't just base the power level on that. And then later on, Whitebeard takes on John Giant and also floors him to the ground, okay? And then I think Luffy took on LaCroix, the, the water dude. Um, and, and Luffy just, uh, maybe not in LaCroix, but it was another giant. Luffy, upon arriving and kind of like his big show-off moment, where Luffy shows, uh, like, at the end of the episode how badass he is to everybody around. He uses, he, uh, gear third, he gaunt rifle and just plows right into a freaking giant, and it just, like, grinds him up and knocks him down. Um, I don't think that was LaCroix. I think that was somebody else, actually. But, um, still, like, the giants get dropped, but it's always by, like, really strong characters. Now, it's also been stated through throughout the series that uh, all vice admirals uh, know hockey. Now, I don't know exactly how that, you know, that means, like, every single vice admiral is proficient in both armament and observation. 
I would assume so. I would assume in order to a attain this higher level of Marine, you're really, I mean, like, the Fleet Admiral position is not even, like, a normal promotion kind of position, you know? It's, like, one person. So, really, it's just, like, the second tier down from just Admiral is Vice Admiral. I would assume you could not even attain that position if you were not proficient in both types of hockey, you know? Um, so I would assume that's the case, and, and, and you know, right, that, that's, that makes sense, so all the Giants probably have armament and observation if they are indeed all Vice Admirals, and uh, if, if that's the situation, they are a force to be reckoned with, it's just that in Marine Ford, they didn't really get a chance to shine, because they're always taken down by really top-level characters like Luffy or Whitebeard, obviously Whitebeard's much higher level than Luffy, but Luffy's the main character, you, you gotta see a moment where he floors a Giant and everybody can, yeah, yeah Luffy, awesome! You know, you have to have that moment there. So, um, I expect more from the Giants, especially with Elbaf coming up. I don't know if any of the Marine Giants are going to make an actual appearance, uh, as well as, like, you've got the new Giant Warrior Pirates, Red Rye Hyrudin, Hy but you also have to keep in mind that we're going to their home country, so they might at least be mentioned. Maybe we'll get some backstory involving the Giant Squad, like how come, you know, Ronce and LaCroix and John Giant and, you know, the backstory of with all these guys and how they join the Marines and how Elbaf really views the Giants in the Marines, maybe they respect them, or maybe they kind of have this kind of like hatred for them, like how oh, they abandon our homeland to go and join up with the government, you know, like, so I'm, I'm interested in exactly how they view the giants in their home country, so we'll definitely probably maybe get a reference to that in, in Elbath. Right, so those are the Giants. At this point, I want to talk about the Vice Admirals that um, I really want to be, like, the major players at some point that have straight-up fights with either one of the Straw Hats or maybe one of the members of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet, uh, like an actual brawl. Because here's the thing. This would actually be a really cool way to show how the Straw Hats have grown over the years. If, like, their final battles are, like, you have the monster trio. You have Luffy and Sanji and Zoro take on, like, the Admirals. But then you have the other Straw Hats. Like, everybody has to take on a Vice Admiral at one point. That's, like, one-on-one -on -one combat. No one's going to come and help you. It's, like, Chopper versus Onigumo. It's Usopp versus um, a freaking giant. It's Frankie versus uh, Stainless or somebody. You know, like... like or, or Frankie versus John Giant. I think that was actually shown in one of the openings, like uh, Frankie Shogun brawling it out with John Giant. Um, yeah, so I, I think that would be a cool way, like at the end of the story, to have them straight up brawl against one of the highest ranking members of the Marines, right? Uh, and uh, you, you also might have to include that, because you're going to have to change it up from the Monster Trio, because Jinbei is going to be joining soon, uh, and, and he's also going to be one of the strongest members. I would probably rank him somewhere between Zoro and Sanji. Uh, even if you really want to upplay Sanji's strength, you know, he would still be like the fourth strongest, right, on the crew. So I guess that would be called the Monster Quad... Quad quadruple what would what would it be called you got you got you got you got your monster duo if it was two monster trio three monster what is the term for four like four people quadra I want to say like quadruped but that is so not right um yeah so you I, I it was like a quintet would be five but qu quadtet I don't know I don't know that that bugs me that I don't know that off the top of my head all right anyway um so Momonga, not gonna go more into him. I definitely want to see a fight with Momonga and Zoro. Okay. Onigumo. Onigumo has a very unique devil fruit. We don't really get to see devil fruits based off of, like, insects or, well, obviously a spider's not an insect, it's an arachnid. Or, we don't get to see devil fruits like that. It's usually mammals. You know, they're usually, like, you know, a, a giraffe or a cow or a dog or something like that. We don't really get to see devil fruits like that. We've got to see that with the, um, the Tontadas and that was pretty much it. It's actually kind of unique that Onigumo has that kind of fruit because you understand that the Tontadas Tontadas are pretty small, so they would have the Mushi Mushi no Mi, the insects fruits, and, you know, they were able to, you know, take aspects of insects, but they're already pretty tiny. But then you have Onigumo that has a fruit based off of a spider, and he doesn't, like, it doesn't, like, uh, shrink down or anything, like, he just grows, like, giant spider legs coming out of his body, and he could hold a, a sword in each one and, like, cut down his opponents. I think there's a lot of applications for that. Um, if he has, like, a full spider transformation, he would literally be a giant spider. Ever see Eight-Legged Freaks? <laughs> 
glow, um, you know, being able to, you know, inject venom. Oh, think of all the things spiders can do, like tarantulas, which it might actually seem like he is a hairy spider, um, so he might be a tarantula type devil fruit, who knows? But, um, even tarantulas have things other than just their venom. They can also, like, you know, shed their hair, and their hair can be used, like, if you inhale it, it can cause, like, inflammation of your throat, like, various things that they could use. Spider devil fruits would be so cool, and we've never seen any of them, so I'm really looking forward to Onigumo. Uh, Stainless, just because of his kind of, like, swashbuckler kind of attire, um, you know, he's got the mustache, he fights with a sword, very kind of clean-cut looking dude, and kind of Three Musketeers sort of setup. I'm, I'm looking forward to Stainless, I think he could do some pretty cool shit. Uh, Doberman, hard not to look at a guy that's completely covered in scars and not think that he's badass, so yeah. John Giant, because he's one of the first, he was the first giant revealed in the story. His marine attire is a little different from the others. Um, I'm looking to see at least one solid fight with him. Suru, most definitely, alright? And uh, Suru has such a weird devil fruit. I'm not really sure exactly how it operates. It's stated that she hung, she hangs pirates out to dry and it like cleans their hearts a little bit. It washes away the evil of their heart and Oda stated it. That's a very dangerous ability, especially for pirates. So I'm um, looking to see something from Suru there. Now, sh her thing is more as a tactician than an actual straight up combatant. I'm sure she could definitely handle herself in a fight. But I think something more important for her would be, like, if they were going to, like, uh, you know, go after the One Piece or something at Rafto, like, this big epic war, and she would be there, you know, having this mobile fleet, you know, organizing everything into battle and all that stuff there. Um, in fact, I think it's part of the reason why Jack was so easily decimated and pulled back there. Uh, well, I guess I shouldn't say easily, because I think Jack did manage to sink at least a few of the convoy ships. But uh, you had Suru there, you had Sengoku there, you had Isho there, so I think, though, that Suru was a big, uh, important part in how they, they were able to reject Jack from that convoy, right? So definitely want to see something with her. Um, Dalmatian, you know, despite the epic, you know, beginning of this video, we're like, Dalmatian is awesome! Um, you know, he has a dog, Devil Fruit, so he's got, you know, the canine teeth, he's got the claws... Okay, uh, probably heightened sense of smell, heightened hence, uh, sense of hearing... All right, but I'm not I'm not expecting great things from him. Uh, there's another vice admiral named Cancer, which just kind of seems like the diet version of Smoker. <laughs> you know, Smoker and Cancer, I can imagine them hanging out. In fact, there needs to be a cover page of like the smoking area at the Marine HQ, and you just see Smoker smoking like two cigars, and then you see uh, freaking uh, Cancer out there smoking cigarettes, and they're just out there together, and then that's that's something there, right? So you you guys, need, I hope the Marines have a good health plan because you guys are probably going to get, well, maybe not Smoker, because I have a theory that the, uh, the, the plume plume fruit he ate to the smoke fruit, that'll actually, um, make him immune from getting lung cancer, that's my theory, so, uh, I think Smoker will be okay. Cancer, though, you might want to watch it, I'm feeling like you might be, you might be getting some sort of disease, I'm, I can't think of which one, but, uh, yeah, watch out, Cancer, okay. Beyond that, there's really nobody else, um, Garp, of course, has to have a shining moment, but once again, Garp is not really a vice admiral, so I hesitate to really discuss him here. And I already made a discussion video about Garp. If you're, like, sitting here and you're profoundly upset by the lack of Garp discussion, or every time I'm talking about these, like, like um, vice admirals that don't get a lot of uh, screen time, like, every time I bring up Momonga, it's like, oh my god, teching, talk about Garp! Talk about Garp! I already did! Here you go, I talked about Garp at length, with, with, uh, as well as with Sengoku, so go watch that video about Garp. I might make another video about Garp, I love Garp, Garp's awesome, but he's not a Vice Admiral, okay? And he's not the kind of Marine that's gonna, like, we saw him at Marineford, and you think, like, like going into Marineford, we all thought, like, is he going to have a straight-up fight with Luffy? And the moment comes when Garp slams down on the bridge, and Luffy's coming at him, and it's like, okay, what's gonna happen? And, um, Garp didn't have it in him. His, 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 uh, like, paternal instincts kind of kicked in. And, because he basically kind of did raise Luffy. I mean, Dragon wasn't around, so during Luffy's very early years, Ace and Luffy were basically Garp's children. So, he didn't have it in him. And I can't begrudge him for that. I'm not gonna call him weak for not wanting to kill his fucking grandson. So, uh, he lets Luffy kick, you know, hit him in the face with gear second and knock him down. Didn't get hurt from it. Got a little bloody nose. Whatever. Just like, you know, whatever. Move on with the rest of your day. But, um, 
I don't think we're going to get the straight up fight between Garp and any of like the Straw Hats. That's not going to happen. Uh, Garp taking on Sakazuki though, that could be something fun. Like, he just can't take it anymore, and he's just like, I, I have to beat you down for what you did. And that could result in a brawl, and, and, and we'll see what happened there. I mean, Garp's getting on in years, I don't want to say who would win and lose that fight. Uh, you probably are already making up your decisions, so I should probably address that now. I, okay. Um, you want to immediately say Garp would just kick the shit out of Akainu. Uh, you, you want to say that. Uh, Garp is getting on in years, though. Akainu's kind of in his peak. You know, and he, he has a devil fruit. Garp does not. Uh, he does have hockey, right? And yeah. Um, you also have to consider Akainu. Like, he took a straight-up attack from Whitebeard. And granted, Whitebeard was injured there. But he took, like, a few Gura Gura shots right to his... Like, I think one to his face and one to his body. Definitely broke some bones there. But he was still able to get up after that. Um, I don't know if that's an easy fight to call, and I don't even really, I feel uncomfortable even bringing this up, because I feel like now there's just an entire war in the comments section. But I'm, I'm gonna have to leave that open-ended, and that's probably gonna piss some people off. You know what? No. I'm gonna have to take a side on this. I'm gonna say, straight up fight, no holds bar, they're not, they're not get letting their emotions, well, they are letting their emotions get involved, but it's nothing like, you know... A Kainu's gonna let Garp live because he's a marine hero or anything like that. Like a straight up fight, you know, with intent to kill between Garp and a Kainu. I would have to say Garp would win. I would have to make that decision at the end of it. The mag, uh, but he would be he would be messed up. He would be like missing an arm or something after it. I I could see it to the point where Garp goes to punch him. And Akainu, you know, has his magma, and, like, while in the middle of getting, like, Garp's fist, like, his, it's melting away with the magma. It, like, you remember, okay, do you watch Toriko? There was a scene in Toriko where he got his fist bitten off, and Toriko proceeded to continue to punch an enemy with his still-bleeding stump, and just, BAM! That's something I could see happening with Garp. Like, Garp charges up his armament fist, which could shatter, like, continents. And he goes, and a kind of, like, m massive magma wave. And it just begins to melt away. You could see the bone and muscle and shit. And it's just beginning to melt, but Garp don't care. He's just like, Aah! And just slams into a kind and just right into the ground. And, and Garp loses his fist, Garp loses his arm at the end of the day, but um, he comes out on top. I, I could see that going down that way. I'm gonna have to make a call on that, that Garp would win against a Kainu in a straight-up brawl. Okay. Um, but that there, there's the Garp discussion part of the video. Are you happy, kids? I, I am. That was actually really, that got the testosterone moving. I mean... I, I know I don't look like the poster boy for that, but that, that really got it moving. I need to go eat a steak now. All right, well, hope you guys enjoyed this just random Vice Admiral discussion. Um, comment below on who your favorite Vice Admiral is, who who you want to see fight against uh, who. Like, here's my, like, five favorite Vice Admirals, and I want to see them fight against these characters. They don't have to be Straw Hats. They don't have to be Straw Hats. They could be members of the Grand Fleet. They could be other pirates. Just what is, like, your dream fights between these Vice Admirals? Because they very much are strong characters in the One Piece world. I think they deserve some recognition. So thanks for watching, everybody. This will be Teching 101 signing out later.